If you feel like your hair has been stagnant, it's not growing, it has never grown enough, if you want some tips to just help you grow your hair, boost your hair growth, I'm going to give you five tips to double the rate of your hair growth in this video, so stay tuned all the way to the end. They are only five points. Hey love, it's Angelica aka Angie B. Welcome or welcome back to my channel if you are new. My name is Angelica. I post videos twice a week all about growing long, healthy, natural hair. I do a little bit of skincare, makeup, whatever fun, extra stuff, reactions here and there. So if that seems like something you might be interested in, consider subscribing. The subscription button is right down there as well as the bell icon. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications every single time I post. Without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so getting into it, first let's just address the hairstyle. You know, I don't usually put my hair in a bun or anything like this, but I actually kind of like this look. My hair is just in some twists. I will show you what my hair looked like before right here. And this was yesterday. You can see that I was just twisting my hair up. This is my preferred protective style, twists or braids. And I really like how this turned out. So if you'd like to see like a styling, it's basically nothing. But if you'd like to see how I style it, let me know. And also if you like my makeup, you can follow me on my Instagram right here. It is Angie B with three underscores. And it is the same on TikTok if you want to follow me there. Okay, so getting into the five things that you need to do that will double the rate of your hair growth. You have to start by knowing about hair follicles. So everybody is born with the same, not the same number, what am I saying? Everybody is born with a certain amount of hair follicles on your head and it will, according to science, never increase or decrease. The only thing is maybe some hair might stop growing out of certain follicles and that's how you can thicken your hair by boosting the growth from the dormant follicles. But on average, everybody has about 5 million hair follicles on their head and an average of 100,000 follicles on your scalp. So the follicles are actually like underneath your scalp. Those are the ones that are like 5 million and then the ones that are on your scalp are a hundred thousand so when you hear products say it will increase the amount of follicles you have it's more like it might help increase the amount of follicles that show up on your scalp you have five million underneath you have a hundred thousand roughly obviously some have more some have less but approximately a hundred thousand on your head so maybe if you use a product that helps boost your hair growth and open up your follicles maybe you can get a few extra on your scalp but not on your head hopefully that made enough sense Saying that, in regular terms, this just means if you have a certain number of hairs on your head, aka your hair is extremely thick or extremely fine, there's not that much you can do to increase the number of hairs on your head. What you can do is just increase the health and the rate of the growth on the follicles and hairs that are already there. So the way your hair grows is that your hair grows from the follicle that's underneath your hair and then it grows through the follicle that's on your scalp. So what you need to do is increase the oxygen, blood supply, vitamins and all that to the follicles underneath the scalp so that it promotes the hair growth to come out through the follicles that are on your scalp. So these five tips that I'm going to be giving you are ways that you can improve that and send all the stuff to the follicles underneath your scalp. So the first thing you need to do that's going to have a dramatic dramatic impact on your hair growth this is why i put it first not last not that the other points are any less important trust me they are equally as important but this is one that is so overlooked all the time this is why i wanted to put it first in case you change your mind and click out and this is your protein intake. I don't mean the protein you put on your hair, mixing an egg in or using like an afoji or whatever kind of protein treatment in your hair. While yes, your hair does need protein externally and that does help, you actually see more benefits from intaking protein. So this can be eggs, fish, beans. It doesn't matter if you're vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian. What are we called? Meatarian? <laughs> Regular eaters. People who eat almost everything it doesn't matter what your diet is you need protein there is vegetable there is vegetable protein there is meat protein there is so many different types of protein by the way if you hear like a kind of buzzing sound someone's mowing the lawn outside so you know people always decide to make noise on my filming day but yes eat protein the recommended amount on average is 50 grams for the day but the thing is everybody's different you might be way taller than me and bigger than me naturally you might be way smaller than me and shorter than me which is not many people who are shorter than me because I'm very short but it all depends on your size so possibly if you're on like a dietitian if you're working with a dietitian or something like that this will actually help and with talking about 
the hair growth with protein if you recently changed your diet or you've been on a prolonged restrictive diet that doesn't have enough nutrients different kinds of protein again doesn't matter if you're vegan or not or vegetarian if you are lacking a lot of minerals and elements and nutrients in your diet because you're maybe restricting yourself whether you're trying to lose weight or do whatever if you've just recently changed your diet and you start to notice that your hair or if you think about it and you notice when your hair kind of got a little bit stagnant or didn't start to grow enough or fast at a normal rate for you it might be because of your diet so that is something you need to look into but the first thing I would just say is increase your protein intake the next tip is one of my favorite tips and if you are not new to this channel then you know that I love my essential oils. Essential oils are some of the oils that show you the most dramatic differences. Now, carrier oils are great for moisturizing. It's more like they are slightly hydrating and then they seal in the moisture that's already in your hair. That's what carrier oils are best for. And yes, some of them do promote growth, but they are not as effective as essential oils. For you to start to see the hair growth benefits, it'll probably take you maybe two to three months for you to start to see a difference. So the difference is happening. It's just slightly slower, but with essential oils, you start to see dramatic results. Like within two weeks, you start to see changes in your hair. Now, these points are not contradicting each other. I'm just explaining this. Because carrier oils are not as effective, you don't have to be too strict on the carrier oil that you're using unless it's something that you're either allergic to or your hair does not agree with. So for, let me say, a carrier oil, you could use olive oil, macadamia nut oil, almond oil, um, there's so many different types of oils. Castor oil, you can use many types of those carrier oils. Then you need to use the essential oils to dilute into one of those. So I'm not going to say like pick the best one. My personal favorite is avocado oil, but I have not been able to find avocado, avocado oil for almost a whole year. And as you can see, or maybe not, <laughs> As you saw in the beginning of this video my hair is still growing and doing amazing without the avocado oil so that's just my preference but I have been using a lot of almond oil and a lot of olive oil and these two oils are also great carrier oils there's not a huge difference between them which is why I'm saying it's just your preference now for the essential oils they always come in tiny bottles and they are extremely concentrated and no you don't have to use them every single day using a lot of something doesn't necessarily mean it's better um also you don't have to use too much of it not even have to you should not use too much of them because you can get very very bad reactions from them you can get allergic reactions is there something in my hair no <laughs> you can have an allergic reaction there's so many factors that can go into it it can burn you things like peppermint oil tea tree oil can actually cause really bad burns and just extremely bad reactions so those there's a reason they come in tiny bottles they are in small small doses so all you need is two to three drops in your favorite oil this is my oil mix you guys know it I will put the link at the end of this video I'll show you how I make this oil mix so you can see it but this has Peppermint oil, tea tree oil, rosemary oil, and it's diluted in a mix of olive oil and avocado oil. Now, if you want to use an essential oil and you say, um, I just want to try peppermint oil, try it in something that's plain, like just one oil. If you want to try peppermint oil for the first time, mix it in just with something like olive oil so that in case you have a reaction, these things usually have a low reaction allergy rate but you still could have an allergy to it. So make sure you test it in one oil so that if you happen to react to anything, you will know exactly what the reaction is from. And I will do a video coming soon specifically about my favorite oils and how to use them and when and why and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that. So peppermint oil. Peppermint oil helps stimulate the scalp. Like when you put it on your scalp, you literally feel your scalp tingling and getting warm and this sends the blood flow to the area and like i said you want to stim stimulate the follicles underneath your scalp to send more of the oxygen and nutrients to the follicles and the hair on top of your scalp it also helps thicken your individual hair shaft like the hair shaft it helps thicken the hair shaft and it helps increase the depth of the follicle so the reason why this is good is because if your follicle is deeper 
then it's harder for your hair to come out. If your hair is very, like your follicles are kind of damaged and clogged and it feels like your hair is just kind of sitting on top of the follicle, every time you comb your hair, you're going to get so much shed hair because your hair is not deep enough into the follicle. So the depth of the follicle is actually very important. And then when this was tested on mice, which, you know, we're in 2020, shouldn't be testing on mice, but I'm pretty sure this is a very old study. When an old study was done, it showed that it actually increased the amount of follicles of hair on the mouse. So on a person, again, I go back to the same thing. I think it just increases like the follicles from underneath your scalp kind of show up more rather than giving you new follicles because that's literally impossible. It's the same as pores on your face. As you get older, sometimes the pores on your face just get a little bit larger and it looks like you have more pores, but you're not getting more. You can't have more pores. The same amount of pores you're born, the same amount of pores you are born with is the same amount that you have for your whole life. So the second oil, all these oils I'm talking about are actually in this and I will do a separate video like I said, but in case you don't go and see that separate video, I'd like to detail it a little bit here. I'm trying to talk slower because people say I talk too fast. Yes, rosemary oil. Rosemary oil is one of the oils that's also great for thickness and that is what it is known for. Kind of underrated, but it is great for thickening your hair shaft. Similar to the, similar to the peppermint oil, but this one is like strictly strictly mainly for thickening your hair shaft and also it helps prevent hair loss which makes your hair fuller and thicker as well because the less you shed hairs the more hairs you have on your head the thicker your hair is going to be and the third oil that i'm mentioning under the oils is tea tree oil now you guys know i love tea tree oil so much and one of the main benefits of tea tree oil is it is antibacterial and antimicrobial this means that if you put it on your scalp there's a high chance that it's going to prevent you from getting dandruff your hair won't be itching due to like any kind of bacteria that's on your scalp and if you're not scratching your hair you possibly won't be ripping out any hairs it will make your hair feel nice and clean and a clean scalp thrives okay my light is changing hopefully it's gonna go back to the way it was it's kind of blinding me anyway yes the tea tree oil is amazing for that so like i said you don't have to mix all three together if you have used all three before you love them they work great on your hair there's no problem with mixing them but mix them in very small doses because again natural products are highly unstable because we are not chemists and we can't put the exact proportion of what's supposed to be there so it's best to put slightly too little than too much okay so now under the five tips we are on the third one and it is one of my favorite ones and it goes hand in hand with the last one and this is scalp massages scalp massages are great for hair growth they kind of work they kind of work similarly to how peppermint oil works they stimulate your scalp they unclog any blocked follicles it sends lots of blood flow oxygen and nutrients to your hair so my favorite thing to do is to combine a scalp massage with an oil now i will link that video in the eye i give a detailed explanation of how to massage your scalp how to get the most hair growth out of it so the best way is to always use the pads of your fingers in case you're not watching that video do not use your nails do not scratch your scalp because if you see any hairs on your hands afterwards that means you're massaging your hair wrong you're doing everything is just being too rough you shouldn't do it like that when you massage your hair it should be like in small circular motions like this and when you take your hands off they should literally be not a single hair then you know you're doing it right and I actually get this question sometimes people ask me like how do I know if my, I've massaged my scalp long enough so the time the best time is between 4 to 10 minutes I know that's kind of a wide gap but 4 to 10 minutes is the best time and the way you know when you've massaged your scalp enough is when your scalp starts to feel warm and a little bit tingly not tingly like the peppermint oil because you might not be using peppermint oil you can use any oil but the oils that I mentioned previously would be great for that mixed in with the carrier oil but if you just use an oil like avocado oil um, you will still feel that kind of tingly kind of feeling it's just like blood rushing to your scalp if you've ever done the inversion method or if you walk for a really long time and you feel like the blood is all rushing down your hands your hands kind of feel like a little bit tingly that's how your scalp should feel and you know that you have done enough and your hair is perfectly in good condition to attract the growth now how often should you do this scalping your hair using these oils and also doing the scalp massages using the oils i would say twice a week scalp massages i would suggest twice a week but for this one you can actually do it every day there's actually no side effects with that but for the oils 
just stick to twice a week or even once a week depending on what your hair needs. So aside from the benefits of physically massaging your scalp and attracting the blood, drawing the blood and the nutrients and everything to help promote your hair growth, it actually relaxes your body and it relieves stress. Now if you didn't know, stress is one of the number one causes for hair loss because I don't know the science behind it but it just blocks certain things and I guess it puts your body in panic mode and your body's like oh my god her hair is not that important this person is stressed she needs oxygen she needs this and then it starts sending all this blood and everything to all the vital parts of your body like your liver your lungs your heart and then your hair is left out and then all of a sudden your hair is falling out your hair is thinning so if you do this every single night or a couple nights a week it'll help relieve stress before you sleep and that's a great phase for your hair to grow when you are resting for everything to start rebuilding and if you are less stressed there's a higher chance that your hair is going to grow in a great environment and everything will be sent to your hair just like normal the fourth tip is one that might be very hard for some of you if you are relaxed or you like to wear your hair straight if you're a straight natural if you like to blow dry your hair or you just like to use a lot of heat on your hair if you're watching this video there's a chance you might be having some heat damage or you feel like your hair is not growing enough I suggest you take a heat break and I know if you're used to it it can be very difficult it used to be very difficult for me and what I would suggest is that you take a minimum of a three month break and see if it makes a difference heat promotes so much breakage you don't even notice because it breaks your hair it's like slowly and fast at the same time. Tiny pieces of hair break off the ends repeatedly almost every single day and then it looks like you just woke up one day and all of a sudden you've lost like five inches of hair. Also adding heat to your hair sucks the moisture out and it makes it extremely dry and even more prone to breakage. So if you take at least a three month break, I would personally recommend six months, but at least a three month break, I think you'll see some big differences. And then moving on from that after the break, I would suggest you highly reduce the amount of heat that you use, whether it's roller sets, blow drying, anything like that. So if you used to do it maybe twice a week, scale it down to once a week for, for a while, then scale it to once every two weeks, and maybe you could get to once every month. And I guarantee you will see amazing changes. Now, if you happen to have low porosity hair and you're thinking, when I deep condition, I use heat, that's actually fine because it's not direct heat, it's indirect heat. If you're under a cap, you go under a steamer or anything like that, that heat can actually help open the follicles and that lots of the products and the nutrients go into your hair. So that is fine, but direct heat, try and take a break. The fifth and final tip, but don't worry, there is a bonus. The fifth and final tip is, it's another sad one. You need to take a coloring break. Try and take a break from coloring your hair. I would highly suggest a six month to one year break if you want to see amazing changes. Dyeing your hair lighter, is always more damaging than dyeing your hair darker because when you have to dye your hair lighter you are removing color from your hair breaking some of the bonds some of the protein bonds and all that when you're taking some of the color out of your hair it's more damaging compared to if you're doing your hair darker if you dye your hair darker you're kind of depositing color onto your hair it can still have a direct effect it can still have a drying effect it is still it's still damaging it's still drying it's still not so great but if you have to and this is what i suggest if you had lighter hair and you want to take a heat break and you don't want to have that thing where you have like if your hair is light blonde and then you have like this much of like dark hair and then there's a huge demarcation line then your hair is blonde i would suggest first of all dyeing your hair darker to a color that is very similar to your own hair so that when your hair grows out it is kind of similar to that color and then maybe when you reach like your hair goal if you want to go back lighter and stuff you can go through the whole color remover step and work through that or you could try temporary hair color there's a lot of those right now to blend the two colors between your dyed color and the natural hair color and maybe that can help you a little bit trust me you will see such huge differences one of the most drying things is coloring your hair and so many of us are used to having a certain color of hair and it can just throw everything off your makeup your clothes and a whole bunch of things but if your goal is to actually get healthier longer thicker hair you might want to take a coloring break now bonus because i know somebody's gonna say it in the comments yes genetics do play a big part in how fast your hair grows how many how, how fast your hair grows how many follicles you have on your head 
how many hairs you shed every day. But the thing is, that is only one hair growth factor. If you have hair that grows very fast and naturally thick hair because it all runs in your family and it's in your genetics, if you constantly flat iron your hair, if you are always bleaching your hair, trust me, someone with better, better hair genetics than you can have much worse hair than you who has the slower growing or thinner hair kinds of genetics. So genetics is just one factor and there's literally nothing you can do to change your genetics. So there's no need to be like, well, that person's hair is like that because of their genetics. Maybe. But that is not the point. No one can change their genetics. The only thing you can do is work around them and do so many things as much as you can to try and work around whatever issues you have. If you have hair that grows extremely slowly, your biggest focus should be retaining the length. Focus on your ends. Try and make sure you keep as much hair as possible. If your issue is that your hair is very thin, focus on things that thicken your hair like rosemary oil and peppermint oil, focus on not combing your hair too much so your hair is not shedding so you have more hairs on your head, all that kind of stuff. If you want more of these great hair growth tips that I have used on my own hair, hit my face right there, hit my face here if you'd like to see my other channel. If you didn't subscribe in the beginning, watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here. If you'd like to see any of my older videos, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!